In this episode, I think one of the things I'm most proud of is kind of our, our camera work. We were trying to still figure out our voice for the show, and in this, it, it really clicked because we have the introduction to Mei Yin and her character, and one thing we wanted to get across was, was you know, she's tough, she, she can take care of herself, and she fights a giant saber-toothed tiger to save Helena. And we really wanted to make this uh, kind of a, a badass action moment with Mei Yin, so we were trying some different things with the, the camera work, and I was really proud of how that came out. The best storytelling moment of this episode would be when we reveal who's been following um, uh, Helena this whole time, and it's Mei Yin. And it's out of this climactic moment where we feel like uh, Helena is going to uh, be killed by the saber-toothed cat, and then in comes this warrior who we're not quite sure who she is, and we reveal that she's you know, our new main character. And the fans of the game who've played it will automatically recognize her as, as Mei Yin, who's a you know, big fan favorite of the, of the game. You, you speak Chinese? Si, si. Doi boi ti. Boi zhong wen bu hao. My English is better than whatever you call that. What's Helena thinking when she sees Mei Yin? Probably thinking, you know, is this a concussion or have I entered a second heaven? There is an immediate attraction to Mei Yin that, honestly, I think, feels like a gut punch to Helena, having so recently lost her wife. And, you know, the the feeling of disloyalty you know she doesn't know if victoria is here she doesn't know why any of them are here and so there could be you know this this hope and this magnetic leap between kindred spirits but it's also you know her own shame that she should so immediately feel a calling to this other person also helena knows that the ark is a very dangerous place and that this is someone that would be very good to have a friendship with uh for the sheer purpose of surviving there's very much a theme of survival that's going on with all the characters and in situations of survival there is a utilitarian aspect to relationships. I think what differentiates our heroes from our villains is that our heroes very quickly move from utility to then beginning to connect and beginning to kind of get their emotional needs met with each other. So I think for Mei Yin initially she's looking for anyone and anyone who could be an ally with her in her fight against Nerva. But then she begins to see certain aspects of Helena that intrigue her. Um, I think she's genuinely interested in the fact that though Helena is not a warrior with the lifetime of training that Mei Yin has, that Helena has done a job surviving on her own. And I think that this really intrigues Mei Yin. There's this curiosity uh, about Helena, about a person who, who freed others instead of just herself you know, who incapacitated Nerva, who dared all of these things, you know, and not just for her own gain or for revenge, you know, that, that she is trying to act with morality. Um, and Mei Yin knows how that story is going to go. So there's, there's a degree of pity and of wanting to protect this creature from having to learn, as she did, uh, what your compassion will get you in the end. Of course, I'd have conditions. What this world doesn't need any more of is killing. From time to time, blood must be shed to protect the innocent. When Mayan tells Helena about the need to eventually spill blood to protect the innocent, represents the conflict and the crux around which Helena's character is going to operate for not just the rest of the episodes, but also the entire series where we have these two halves of the character. She's got a very warm and empathetic side to her that's very sensitive to the pain and the plight of others. And also there's a part of her that almost outside of her own doing is becoming tougher, is becoming stronger just by virtue of being on the arc. And so these two halves of her will start to come into conflict and ultimately we're gonna result in her growth. But it's a very key thing that Mayin says that's going to really follow Helena in the different situations she's going to be in over the next episodes. So Mayin is in a terrible place emotionally. You know, she has exhausted the last of the hospitality of her friends. She has been betrayed again and again. And when she comes and sees Helena, I think there's a bit of recognition that 
Megan almost wishes she were. This person who can be vulnerable. You know, this sort of um, spunky, stalwart little survivor trying to make the best of it. You know, trying to see the good in people, trying to rescue her little dinosaur. And the other part of it is just contempt. Oh god, you sweet summer child. On May inside, she's seeing how advanced Helena's mind is. Um, Helena's both from a more advanced time, but also she has the traits of curiosity um, and intelligence that make for any good scientist. And Mayan seeing that directly in front of her, and she's starting to think, huh, maybe there's, maybe there are ways to go about getting what I want other than just direct force. A wise scholar, indeed. One of the things that attracted me to Ark as a as a as a story was the blending of dinosaurs, of course, but with science fiction technology. And in this episode, I think is the best kind of melding of the two. We did these holograms with the obelisk, uh, and you know that was a, a bit of challenge. How are we going to do that, especially in a two D animation? kind of world where we we've seen it uh many times in movies and there's a certain level you're expected to see so we kind of wanted to use the kind of classic hologram look but bring that into this this 2d world so with any kind of action sequence um there is a beginning middle and end right some people just think that action sequences are just people fighting and it ends with somebody blowing up or dying but the way that we approach uh, a lot of our action sequences with me and my fellow directors is there's always a story. There's a setup and then there's a story within the middle that we're trying to tell. When we read this in the script, you know, we knew we were going to need a big uh, space for the choreography, for the movement and all that, but you don't want it to be a big kind of empty warehouse. So we put in pillars and things to knock over. But with the choreography, and one of the things I'm most proud of is, you know, we had to get Mei Yen on top of the broodmother and we have her run up the wall, do this really cool flip in the air, and then come straight down with the spear and stab this thing. And that kind of again showed our, what we were doing with our cinematography and our camera angles. But at the same time, uh, keeping the scale of this giant environment that we had to deal with. And part of what's going on for Helena just overall in the series and in her character is her adopting a cause worth fighting for. What we see is that maybe in her past life, she didn't necessarily understand what her mother was doing and the need and necessity um, to give voice to the voiceless and to stand up for the downtrodden. But now on the arc, um, which is kind of an afterlife of a sort, she's got a second chance and she's moving into that. And the fight with this monster and these spiders that's happening in this episode really, really underscores that, that Helen is gonna really take an active role in this and she's gonna do it together with Mei Yin. Why did it have to be spiders? Lots of these cheeky buggers where I come from. Though, they're not usually this big. I've got an idea. 